my name's Allison Brown, and we're here at Compass Sound Studio in Nashville, Tennessee. This afternoon, we want to talk about different options for miking a five-string banjo. I've got my beautiful Deering Julia Bell banjo right here, and we have a couple of Royer 121 ribbon microphones set up, so we'll start with that, and I'll play a little bit of a John Hartford tune for you so we can hear how these sound. So like I said, this is my Deering Julia Bell banjo, and it's an instrument that I developed in collaboration with Deering, and really in tribute to John Hartford, both his music and his artistic spirit. In fact, the instrument features his artwork as inlay patterns on the neck. One thing I love about this instrument is that you can tune it low. Right now it's tuned to an open E chord, and that means that you can still play your G licks, but now you're in the key of E. And the warmth and resonance of this instrument is something that's really just so fun to hear, both in a live context and of course in the studio on the headphones. And these ribbon microphones really do a great job to bring out the warmth and the depth of this instrument. So we're gonna invite our engineer, Matt Coles, to talk to you guys a little bit about different options for placing the mic to bring out the best in the sounds of any banjo. Hey, starting out with Allison, I'm using a space pair of 121s. They're about 12 inches off the banjo and about 12 inches apart. I like to start there, capturing the tail piece and the neck piece and avoiding the pick noise. It helps avoid the pick noise a little bit if you're not directly in front of it. I like the air this gives. It's a great starting place. It gives a nice wide stereo spectrum. Another fun trick to try out with imaging is to actually flip the 121 backwards. On the back side, they typically run a little brighter. This helps the stereo image lean a little bit. And this is good for accompanying with other instruments. We'll see how this sounds. Hopefully you heard the difference on that. It was a little subtle, but within a mix, it can really make a difference. One thing to mention though, when flipping the mic is it will be out of phase. So as a ribbon works, the backside is listening as well. It's a figure eight pattern, but it is 180 degrees out of phase. So you should be conscious of that. One thing also while working in a room is to use a homemade baffle. Sometimes this can really help, uh, especially if these microphones are actually listening on the backside too, it can make a big difference on how these things hear the instrument in front of them. So I just wanted to show you an easy home baffling trick, mic stand, blanket, just drape it over and you have a baffle. Then you can really start controlling the room noise. Another common way we mic banjos around here, and many other instruments, is along with the 121, I'm using a Peluso M49, which is a great tube mic. We use it a lot around here. But one thing to take note of is lining the capsules up. That's very important to get the phase right between the two microphones on the instrument. I usually try to get the capsules as close as I can together. That way they're picking up the same area of the instrument 
and you truly get the contrast between the both mics. As the ribbon will pick up more of the warm, round, lush sounds, I'm going to use the tube to kind of bring out a little more of the head resonance and the strings. So recording banjo can be a pretty tricky thing. Um, one thing I'm mainly looking for is trying to get a round tone and avoid as much pick noise as possible. There's a bunch of different applications that you know banjo music can have. It's, it's such a versatile instrument and as far as its sonic sound. Um, you know, once it depends on if you're going for high energy bluegrass, you know, you might want to use some different mic choices. I love using the Royer because it, it always adds a fat, round, bottom, rich tone.